question one. I'm going to go over the ballot questions. And I'm just, this is just summarizes what the ballot questions deal with because they are consolidated. They are not word for word the changes. There was no way to do that. So in question one, these are mostly not substantive changes that are basically throughout the charter with the exception of maybe the last one. Um, we wanted to look to the future. Actually, this should have happened a long time ago. But um, we wanted to make required legal notices available online on the city's website. State law hasn't been changed for years and years, and a lot of state law, of the state laws, require a publication of notices. Those are expensive to do, they're time consuming, and they have to be done in a certain type of newspaper. We're lucky to have the examiner here, and it is one of those newspapers, but a lot of other newspapers have shut down over the state. So we think that law may eventually change, and we want to be proactive and allow for elect or publication on the website. I think they're still posted on the bulletin board out here at City Hall, so they're available a number of ways. But reading it in a newspaper is probably not the best way to give a good notice to the public. Um, we removed an attachment to the charter that was a legal description of the city boundaries as of December 31st of 1975. I will tell you that I'm guessing that shortly after that was made a part of the charter, it was inaccurate because cities are regularly changing their boundaries through annexations, de-annexations, and detachments. Um, so we felt like, and, and no other charter we saw had a legal description of the city boundaries. We felt like that was, because it just won't remain accurate, that that should be removed from the charter and kept as an uh, official legal description and hopefully that would be done somewhere in the city, probably at the city clerk's office. So that was our recommendation on why to remove that. It doesn't change anything, it doesn't change the boundaries. Those are created by recorded legal documents. So they do not change until the city annexes or de-annexes. Um, we referenced some state statutes um, that would would um, govern certain things that were in our charter and so that they would comply with state statute. We may not have named the particular statute because we also know that those change all the time. But we know that we cannot, um, we can't do anything that's not allowed by statute. Um, we made some grammatical changes. We, used, we, we removed some phrases that were so outdated that none of us really understood what they meant. We renumbered as required, and we did made some language corrections just for clarity and accuracy that, again, didn't substantively change anything in the charter. Now, the last thing that is included on question one in my discussion tonight, we are requiring a mandatory charter review at least every seven <coughs> years. That's, a, that's a, the longest you can go. Charter reviews could be done be difficult, but they probably could be done annually, but whenever they are needed. And we wanted to make that an option for the city and its citizens. We did think that the 11 member group was an excellent number of people. It just worked very well for us. We didn't have trouble getting quorums. We had an absence. We allowed people to participate um, virtually. And we had excellent attendance with our 11 people. So we thought that was good to leave in the charter. And by making it more frequent review, we won't have this enormous ballot coverage <laughs> and number of questions each time if these pass. Um, OK, so question two. That amends articles one, two, four, and five. In article one, the Charter Review Commission recommended uh, adding some public engagement language so that the city is um, directed to reach out to underrepresented communities. We felt that was very important. 
what we added to it was probably a little wordy, and so uh, acting as the city council should, they looked at that and shortened it somewhat, but I think they kept you, kept the intent the way that the Charter Commission wanted, so we did appreciate that. This change does not take away anything from the citizens of independence. It promo promotes equality and we felt that was important. Also, um, we renamed the manage management analyst position to internal auditor, and I think we took out some of the like job duties that were in that. Um, we, from our understanding and from hearing from the city, at times that position could be difficult to fill because of the language in the charter, and, and so that's why we made that change. And we, uh, allow the internal auditor to audit city departments as directed by the Audit and Finance Committee. This was kind of an important change that um, may not seem that way, but we uh, added the allowance of official records to be stored electronically and uh, instead of by paper. So we're trying to move into um, current century and um, avoid destruction of paper documents through natural disasters or fires or that sort of thing. They're probably already kept a lot electronically. We hope that they are, but we wanted to make sure that that was allowed in the charter. And then we um, added a, allowing the city to adopt standard technical codes for building electric or property maintenance. We, um, this, this is worded kind of strangely in this PowerPoint, but it says we require annual update of city code on city's website. I'm assuming that's pretty much, it's updated way more often than that, but we don't want it to not be updated less than one year. It needs to be as current as possible. Um, people use that all the time, I know I do. I look at it constantly. So it's good to, to make sure that that's done on a regular basis. We. The city council, I'm gonna say we, but it includes some city council changes not done by the commission. Remove the city res residency requirements for, for municipal judges. Um, we clarified the powers of the ethics board and we did require that they be um, funded. I don't imagine <coughs> that fund is going to be huge, but we do wanna make sure that they have the assets that they have to operate as independently. Um, we allowed for the potential future transfer of the municipal court to the circuit court only after a public hearing and a supermajority vote of the city council, if desired. We do not ad advocate for that. We think we have a great municipal court system here. It's working as far as I know, but it may not always be financially a good idea for the count for the city to continue to have its own municipal court. Again, I we we don't want that to change right now, and we are not advocating for that. Um, if excuse me, go ahead. Uh, Council Member McCandless has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, there was a question earlier this evening about the budget uh, for the ethics board, and I just wanted to make sure that that was clarified. That would go through the same budget process for the city that every other department, et cetera, would have to go through. It would still be approved by the city council. Okay. I just wanted to be sure Thank to you. clarify that. Thank yeah, you. We, I mean, we didn't put a dollar amount in it. So. Um, if the municipal court is transferred to circuit courts, and I have to say that that has, done in, has been done in many municipal courts in Missouri after some, some Supreme Court decisions a few years ago. Uh, we do require that the city maintain its own city prosecutor who would prosecute those cases. Question three amends articles two, three, eight, nine, and 10. Excellent addition to this by the city council that I am so grateful for is that um, if, if the city is considering the sale of a public utility that that has to go to the voters of the citizens of independence. That is not in the charter now. I think it's, it's an excellent addition. We also, the uh, restricted budgetary transfers and loans from utilities to other departments of the cities. We 
made the decision to remove several administrative departments and their descriptions in favor of putting those in the city code of ordinances. A lot of them already are in the city code of ordinances. Most charters do not include departments. Maybe a few, but not all of them. Um, I know that that's a little controversial. The council made the decision to keep the police and fire departments in the charter. So, um, and again, I think that is a wonderful idea. And so um, I just want to say that, that um, city departments are really, are not dependent on being in the charter. The um, t departments existed before there was a charter. Just because they're in the, they don't have to be in the charter to exist. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, and having the ability to make changes to city organization by ordinance rather than by a change to the charter and a vote of the people, which is time consuming and can't uh, happen as quickly as the city council can do that. That allows for innovation. Uh, it makes it more adaptive, flexible, efficient. Um, the city can, can change as the, change city services as needed and as technology changes and improves, it allows the city to reorganize and consolidate departments. And as an example I would give that hasn't happened too long ago is the creation of the Municipal Services Department. And I don't know if you want to speak further to that, but I just think that that apparently was uh, something that really improved the services of the city. Do you want to add anything? Uh, I'll just quickly, um, I know you got a lot of content to cover, Madam Chair. Um, okay. The um, merger of municipal services took three city departments, public works, water services, and water pollution control. Um, we have been able to consolidate several um, uh, former director level positions through retirements. Uh, all told, uh, that consolidation has saved the city's general fund alone one and a half million dollars uh, through the consolidation and elimination of positions, uh, not to mention then the savings to the sewer and water funds as well. So those are the kind of efficiencies that can be achieved when, when we look at new ways of doing things. We recommended removal of job descriptions that were in the charter that, again, another thing that really needs to be handled administratively with the city with some council review, I'm <coughs> sure. And they should, we thought they should be either in the city code of ordinances or maybe in the personnel rules or something like that. I don't know that job descriptions belong in the charter. I don't think that they do. And then it clarified um, provisions related to the issuance of bonds and notes. And I will say that I have, we had no input on that because none of us have any kind of expertise on bonds and notes. So Mr. Cover was able to get um, some language by the city's expert bond legal counsel. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So those changes were made yeah, that's by correct. them. We, uh, we utilized the city's bond counsel, Gilmore and Bell, uh, to provide a review of that section. And, uh, and that's, where, that's where all the recommendations came from. Yeah. We're grateful to them also. Um, we removed provisions related to city officers and employees entering into contracts on behalf of the city in favor of adding that to the personnel manual or elsewhere. Um, I know that that can cause some problems, but it also kind of makes, if departments can enter into their own contracts, it may, make things run more smoothly. On the other hand, it can create problems. So we felt like that shouldn't be in the charter. It needs to be something that's dealt with by the city council. And we did some rearrangement and reorganization. Uh, we removed Article 10. When I say we removed it, we basically moved it um, to Article 8 and renamed that financial management. We did include some revisions of 10, but a lot of them were duplicative. So that was sort of just uh, made the charter a little more simplified. <coughs> we removed the um, provisions regulating business licenses because the city's 
ability to require a business license is regulated by state law. And um, we added in a requirement for the council to approve financial policies to maintain the financial integrity of city government. And question four, that amends articles six, seven, and 13. We took out the <laughs> examples of election forms that were in the charter. They're really not needed there. They were outdated. The forms will still be available if you're still using them, and they, I believe, will be kept by the city clerk office and made available as needed. Um, we clarified some election dates and processes, and that mainly had to do with some time limits that were in the charter that really don't work anymore because the city's pretty much bound by the Jackson County Election Board on timelines for when to get ballot language to them, and so it wasn't really accurate. So we worked and we reworded that so that it will comply with their rules and requirements. Um, for candidates filing to run for office, we changed a bit it back to um, candidates submitting their petitions that they have walked door to door to get, spent a lot of time doing that. If they show up on the first day of filing with those petitions, their order on the ballot is gonna be randomly chose. And so that is gonna eliminate hopefully camping out in front of the city hall on the first day of filing. And it seems to be more fair also. Any um, nominating petitions that come in the day after that will be just be added to the ballot in order of the ones that are received. Another change that we made was um, in, in the charter language, it used the word if a candidate is incompetent. Well, we believe that incompetent is a legal definition, and so we added that they uh, need to be declared incompetent by a court of law. We added that candidates must be current on all fees and taxes to the city and shall not have unresolved warrants. And um, we also clarified the referendum process and timeline. We didn't make any substantive changes to that. We just tried to make the language a little clearer. And we clarified that franchises and utilities are subject to state laws. Question five amends articles 11, 12, and 14. It removes certain provisions relating to special assessments for public approvement, improvements. I think some of these were either not needed in the charter or were basically duplicative and um, probably should be in, in either state law or the code of ordinances. We removed certain provisions relating to the planning commission and board of adjustment in favor of similar provisions in that are already in state law and future placement in the city code. And I reviewed state statutes on um, planning and zoning boards and the board of boards of adjustment, and they are pretty um, detailed. So they pretty much, the state statutes pretty much set out how those two boards can operate. They even have rules of procedure in them. So putting them in the charter is really of no use at all but you can still develop some additional rules of procedure if the council wants to do that. Um, also, and these are, this will come up later in some of the comments that have come out in opposition to these um, changes, are that people, some people believe that we're taking rights away from the planning commission. We are not. That's already set out, like I said, in the city statutes. And, um, I just want to add, having worked as a city attorney for many years, that um, decisions made by planning commissions are, there's not a whole lot of criteria, I mean, a whole lot of discretion. There's certain levels of discretion made by them. They have to follow the city's code of ordinances, they have to follow state laws, and they have to make their decisions based on criteria that are given to them by the city staff. It's not, you know, I get to vote if I hate, you know, a certain type of housing. 
just because I hate it doesn't mean I, I have to, I'm gonna vote against it. You still have to follow the code and, you s and the um, state law on that. So I, wanna, I just wanna make that clear that it's n that removing that planning commission information doesn't take anything away from the requirements and the um, rules of those two boards and commissions. We took out the subpoena powers from the Planning Commission of the Board of Adjustment. We, from what we understand, they're not used, they're not ne necessary, but if they are, they can be added into the Code of Ordinances. And <coughs> we clarified that meetings, records, accounts, and votes shall be open to the public as required by state law. Of course, that's under the Sunshine Law, which the city has to follow. Okay, I'm done with the um, description of the five questions. Before I go any further, I, w I just want to make a, a note, because I, I think I watched this meeting or was here when the council discussed this, and that is that I think we would have liked to have provided more information to the voters when they go to the polls to vote about the changes that they're voting on. But the election board would not allow us to post or provide a copy of the proposed changes, which would have been helpful. So because they wouldn't allow that, um, we, the council, the city staff, put the everything available on its website and encouraged people to look at that. And I still encourage people to look at that and let the city know if you have any questions about the wording of the ballot questions. Okay, anything else you want to add? I wasn't involved in it. But. Uh, no, no, you are accurate. Uh, with that was our, that was what we wanted to do was provide <coughs> copies of the full red line changes, have those available at uh, polling places. Uh, the election board uh, wouldn't allow that. They considered that to be electioneering and obviously they take, you know, that that's, that's what they're there for. And they made that that's up to them. They run our elections. And so uh, when we found out that that wasn't going to be an option, we've done everything we can. Now, that doesn't mean that someone couldn't take a copy in with them, right? We've, that's online. We've had copies here and other times throughout at different meetings. So someone could certainly take a copy with them, uh, but we, we, we are, the city wasn't allowed to provide them. Uh, so we've done our best to, to put out the information out there and, and make it as, as transparent as we could. What what the proposed changes are. Thank you. And again, if anyone has any questions that they can't uh, get answered by looking at all the documents that are online, please email the city. Would you give that email address again? It's citycharter at indentmo.gov. Okay, thank you. All right, now I'm going to start on dot some org, I'm sorry. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. <laughs> okay. And, and we'll try to answer those. I, I wouldn't mind looking at some of those. If, if I'm able to answer them, I certainly would help with that. Okay. Um, now I'm going to talk about some of the opposition claims that have been made. Um, I haven't seen all of these. I don't look at them all on social media, and I have not watched every single meeting. But I know we've had some really involved citizens uh, come and speak at the council, and they are passionate about some problems they see with this, and so some of these claims we wanted to address tonight. And so first one is the Charter Commission had 11 months to do this work. Citizens only got two months to review it. Well, we were appointed, like I said, in 2022 in an open city council meeting that is published, uh, noticed up, open to the public, anyone could be here, and every single Charter Review Commission meeting was noticed, was open to the public, and was live streamed, and is still available on YouTube. I know there were some um, audio issues with some of our first meetings, um, but again, if you got questions about it, please let us know, we'd be happy to talk about it. But we feel like there was plenty of notice to the public um, and we, so I don't believe that this, I don't believe the citizens only got two months to review it. Um, the, the Charter Commission were appointed by the mayor and the city council during a public meeting. Commission held 20 meetings. 
um, I presented at the council on January 8th, 24, at a public meeting. And the city council had several meetings discussing this and spent a lot of time on it, in-depth time. And those dates are um, set out on this PowerPoint, but they started on February 8th and ended on April 15th, which was the second reading of the ballot ordinance. And that time was set by the election board. You had to get the ballot uh, language to them. Our charter protects our rights, freedoms, and liberties. There are many instances where they remove the rights of the people. These amendments re remove our voice, our vote, and our rights. The city charter, even though sometimes I may compare it to a constitution, it is not a constitution. The purpose of the charter is not to establish rights. Those are given to every citizen of the United States and the state of Missouri by the U.S. Constitution Bill of Rights and the Missouri Constitution Bill of Rights. Now, some of the, the items we include in the charter may seem like rights, but technically, I don't believe they are. The city is required to follow all state and federal laws. The proposed revisions to the charter do not change that requirement, and all of these revisions that we are proposing must be approved by the voters, and that is required by the Missouri Constitution. Um, the Constitution, Missouri Constitution, requires amen amendments um, to go to the citizens, and the ones we have proposed give more um, more information and more to the citizens. For example, you've added the um, requirement that the cit citizens must vote if there's gonna be a sale of utilities. That wasn't in there before. We are making it easier to access notices and meetings. We wanna make sure they're all on the website and in our inclusion um, in, in the first article, we want to make sure that we broaden the, peop the people that uh, have the ability to participate in city government. And we want to reach out to those people. Our codified rights and protections are being deleted. Each question takes something from the people. Well, each question may take something from the charter, but I don't believe it takes anything from the people. And I, I don't know if the word codified is correct, but um, it, it's not a code, it's not the law, it's a charter. Um, many of the proposed revisions require that the public has a voice within the city government. The question one requires a public review of the charter at the minimum of every seven years. Question two requires the city to proactively engage with the public. Question three requires the people to vote on whether or not the city can sell a public utility. Question four clarifies that council districts shall be updated after every census, every decennial census. Question five clarifies that all meetings, records, and votes of the city council and city departments are open to the public as required by state law. What is being taken away from the charter and the intent to do that are unnecessary and outdated language. We are not taking away any rights or protections of the citizens. Next, if question one passes, all other questions are moot points. Um, I didn't draft the questions again, but each question stands on its own and each, each question must be approved by a majority of the voters for the revisions in that question to take effect. Jer Mr. Cover, did you want to add anything to that? I think you <coughs> okay. summarized it well. Okay. Language requiring fair and equal treatment of every citizen is gone. That is not true. Um, that there was a heading of one of the sections in, in 5.2 <coughs> used the words um, fair and equal treatment of every citizen. The um, proposed 5.2 adds uh, e fair and equal treatment to every citizen. And um, it also adds a requ the requirement that, this, that there be a code of ethics. 
this code of ethics, I strongly believe, will include fair and equal treatment of every citizen. That's part of a code of ethics. Additionally, I just want to say that state and federal laws prohibit, prohibit discrimination. So that's not even necessarily anything that the charter would deal with, but those uh, pro prohibitions have not been taken away by any charter changes. Okay, they classed us, classed us in Article One. The city will search out special people and give them special treatment. I'm not, I didn't really understand what this meant, but um, the purpose of adding what we did to question two is that the city treat public engagement as an integral part of effective and trusted governance. And so in effect, we want to make it easier and, and better uh, for people to participate and be treated fairly by the city government. If passed, question two would require the city to engage with all people of the city, including those who are typically looked over or those who feel they don't have a voice within the city government. Question two removes the ethics portion of our charter. Well, it didn't completely remove the ethics portion of the charter. There is still some very strong language about ethics in that. Again, it requires a code of ethics to be adopted. And the recommendations that the Charter Review Commission made concerning ethics were um, coordinated with the Mayor's Council um, on ethics. I won't get the name right, but review. And so we were working with them. We believe they had a good document. There may be a few things that the council um, wants to change to that. I know it hasn't been adopted yet, but I believe a good document will be adopted. I trust the council to do that. Um, question two proposes that the Board of Ethics role is clarified and that the city be required to provide the Board of Ethics an operating budget. And the city council must follow state laws regarding ethics conflicts of interest, campaign finance, and finance disclosures. So no, ethics have not been removed from the charter. They've been made stronger. <coughs> they demoted the mayor position to basically an employee. The mayor is no longer an elected official. So I had to read this several times to figure out what that meant, and I think I did. Um, but first I want to say that there were no changes made to the mayor's creation, um, powers, duties. Um, there was um, some language added to clarify that the mayor can only declare a state of emergency in accordance with state law. That's really the only change that was made or is recommended to be made. The terms, qualifications, and the election are unchanged. The more I thought about this comment, I think it may refer to places where we struck the word mayor. And the reason we struck that word is because it was used, it was like mayor and council, or council and mayor. The mayor is a part of the city council, and we felt like that was redundant, to have the mayor and council in all those places, and that's why that word was removed. Doesn't remove the mayor, it removes that word. The city council removed themselves. Again, this is one I didn't understand completely but um, the, all the powers of the city are vested in an elected city council. The council is created, the number of council members and the terms, their creation are all unchanged. The city government is not changing. It is a council manager form of government. We are not changing that. We believe that's the best form of government. The city manager is left in. It is the only person left in our charter. I, again, another one I had to read a couple of times. I don't completely understand that, but I'm thinking it may refer to the only position left in our charter, um, but that's also not true because the, we have the seven council members, we have the mayor, mayor pro tempore, the internal auditor, the city clerk, um, any other personnel that's appointed directly by the council, the city manager, the police chief, fire chief, municipal judge, city prosecutor. Those are all still in the charter. 
The city manager position is enhanced by giving it the authority to run every single aspect of our life. Again, this is, the city is a council manager form of government. That did not change. None of the city manager's powers or duties are changed. Um, and there are six primary duties listed. Those remain in the charter. So I don't know if anyone has any idea what that referred to, but I'm going to move on if you don't. Yes. Please proceed. Thank you. Regarding the, the city manager's position, I made several amendments towards the end there, and thank you for the council to indulge me while I was doing so. Because um, the, the committee did bring to the council recommending that there should be a, a five vote. Right. And I, I thought, I thought the, the government should have a four vote in order to um, hire or fire, or fire a city manager. No offense there, Zach, you're doing a great job. But I thought that threshold should have been lower. So that actually gives the, the city council a little bit more protection to, uh, as, as we move forward with, with city manager position. Thank so. you. And, it, and that is the way it is in the charter currently. Yeah, thanks. All power is left to one unelected bureaucrat, <laughs> the city manager that no one voted for. Um, again, city manager, uh, manager, council form of government, but the city manager is, reports and is responsible directly to the council. The council hires and can terminate the city manager. Um, so the city manager runs the city administratively, but he doesn't run our lives. Um, this council um, can remove or suspend the city manager with or without cause by, like, like you said, council member, an affirmative vote of at least four members of the council. And then there's language on here of, of the kind of the definition of a um, council manager for the form of government. And it is, it is sub subject to the limitations imposed by the Constitution and laws of the state of Missouri and the Charter, and all the powers of the city are vested in its elected officials. The Model City Charter strongly advocates the um, manage, uh, city manager council form of government. They call it the three E's, which are effective, effectiveness, efficiency, and economy, and that it promotes a capable governing body and a city manager accountable to the council. Our city managers are chosen because of their professional expertise and experience. This question removes the public utility regulatory agency for a public utility franchise such as Comcast, MGE, AT&T, et cetera. The, I, and I think that must refer to the Missouri Public Service Commission, I'm not sure, but they do not regulate IPL, correct? Am I correct on that? That's correct. Y yes. Okay. <laughs> They regulate investor-owned electric, steam, natural gas, water, and sewer companies. They have limited authority over telephone providers in the state. The city council will continue to set policy and adopt rates for IPL, water, and wastewater. State laws regulate private utility franchises. They're saying question four allows the potential to remove the city's public works department and send it to be controlled by the county. I didn't find that anywhere in any of the recommended amendments, so I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, but section 10.1 does give the city the power to establish, improve, acquire, construct, reconstruct, alter, repair, and maintain <clears throat> all public works or improvements. Proposed revisions to the charter do not contemplate the city's public works will be controlled by the county. The public works department is now part of the municipal services department. And as city manager Walker said, that consolidation has saved the general fund approximately $1.5 million. 
Question five removes the input of the Planning Commission to prepare and recommend an official map of the city. This take a, takes away citizens' input. Well, the city boundaries and council districts are not uh, considered by the Planning Commission. And as I said earlier, um, the official map, the legal description of the city is, is not, it's a, it's a document that really cannot be changed other than by annexation, de-annexation, or detachment. So I don't, I, I don't understand the basis of this complaint. Um, the Planning Commission prepares and approves the city's master plan, to which under our proposals will be renamed the Comprehensive Plan. And state law requires the Planning Commission to make recommendations for all zoning mac map amendments, which are considered at public meetings. The questions remove the rights that state law says cannot be removed by the charter. So the Charter, uh, changes to the charter amendments, creation of a charter, they are governed by the Missouri Constitution. The statute, there is a, a real short statute, but it says governed by the Missouri Constitution. So that is, that is the authorization for changes and amendments to the city charter. No law requires, not the Constitution or state laws, require the city to include any particular items in its charter. The Missouri Constitution provides that the city has all the powers that any cities in Missouri have unless the charter limits those powers. And the purpose of charter cities is to allow the organization and powers of the city to be decided by the people. <clears throat> A summary statement and fiscal note are required and the city didn't include those in the questions. Mr. Covert, would you answer that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, summary statements and fiscal notes are required for statewide ballot initiatives. They're not required for city charter amendments unless that was in our charter as a requirement, and it's not. So there is uh, the, the references that have been made to, to state law refer to statewide ballot issues, not city charter amendments. Thank you. Changes to section 15.2 will leave citizens. I, I would add oh, real quick, that, that said, obviously the, the, we have prepared uh, a summary as well as a number of other documents to help uh, people to better understand the, the proposed charter amendments, which are all available on the website, and we've got copies here this evening. So none of those were required uh, by, by any particular law, but we, but we did want to do that to help people better understand the proposed changes. Thank you. Changes to section 15.2 will leave citizens with vague questions. These questions are not amendments as required by state law. Um, another kind of confusing statement because as I said, state law really doesn't govern charter and amendments, it's the Missouri Constitution. Now the wording of the questions we've, we've talked about and if if Mr. Walker or Mr. Cover want to discuss that further, I'm, I'm happy, I would be happy to hear you do that. The Charter Review Commission did not participate in drafting those questions, so um, I can't really speak to it. Um, I will say that, like, like I said at the beginning, there was a, an attorney representing the city with vast city municipal government law knowledge at every single one of our meetings. We had two attorneys on our commission. Um, we got outside legal help with the bonds um, work. So um, these were every change was carefully reviewed. And if, if any of us on the commission thought there was a legal question that needed to be looked at, we asked for it and we got it at, at the next meeting that we had. Um, as far as the wording of the ballot questions. That was discussed by the council. I know I saw those meetings at length. And um, you did what you had to do to get it on the August primary ballot, which is gonna be a long ballot anyway. So um, again, I'll let, let city staff speak to that more um, detailed. 
Uh, well, I mean, as you all are, are aware, mo most but not all of you uh, were involved in that process as we were going along with drafting the ballot questions. Unfortunately, I mean, I I ideally, we would have every proposed change would be its own separate question to give everyone ultimate authority and the ability to, to pick and choose. Um, that just wasn't practical. And so what we did was do the best we can to, to group them together uh, in, uh, you know, the goal was as, as few as questions as we could, but it still made sense. And that's where, how we ended up with uh, the, five, the five questions that we have, because obviously there's different parts of the charter that affect different, different articles and have references and that sort of thing. So why, when you change one part, it potentially has a ripple effect into other parts of the charter. So we had to take that into account. Uh, in the end, uh, you know, with, with input from the council, we ended up on, on the five questions that are on the ballot. Uh, you know, we think that that makes sense and that does a good job. Those they, as I was presented previously, those are standalone questions. Uh, so, you know, question one could, could fail and the other four could pass or any combination thereof and, and it all still works. That was done intentionally so that otherwise we could, you know, if they were, if they were interconnected, then if one passed and one failed, that could potentially uh, produce a conflict. So that's how, how the five questions were designed. I understand and, and certainly uh, can see the, the criticism that it should have been more spread out into multiple questions. Um, and that's, uh, and, and I, I get that in the end, we, we came up with what we thought would, would work the best uh, and be able to have a, a ballot that, that voters could, could read and understand and, and absorb, uh, you know, also considering there's a number of other questions and issues that are gonna be in front of them on that ballot. And, uh, and, you know, and we just wanted to make sure everyone had, had the information in front of them the best they can, uh, the best we could provide it to them. Thank you. That ends my presentation.